Hello, it's Vanessa Viljean, and welcome to the Vision and Butterfly podcast. Yes, yes, this has been in the archives for years, as in I planned it all out and the brand has changed here and there, but I finally brought it to fruition years later. Here we are, and we're going to talk. We're going to yap. I'm going to just let my heart and thoughts pour out, and hopefully we can make something productive of it. Obviously, share this to a friend if you think that it will help them. If they need some context for some of my recent social media shenanigans. Because this is the place where I feel like I can actually establish more context. You know, when you're making social media content, a lot of it is short form and it's just the real people and get them curious. And I feel like I haven't actually expanded upon the work I've done so that was why I've started my Vigilant Butterfly podcast. And I also want to have my own show like Oprah one day. So yeah, the key and the plan is to really just activate your raw feminine power. Because I'm activating mine. I feel like, you know, education, podcasts are a currency. We can really share wealth and build each other up by yapping. <laughs> and listening to other people yap. So yeah. Today, I'm going to speak about this notion that you need to be whole to love someone. And I think I'm really pressed because I was sat here thinking, okay, I want to speak about internalised misogyny. That's something I'm processing a lot at the moment. And in actuality, like, it just went on so many different roundabouts. And I just wanted to speak about the feelings that I had at a moment in time when I felt like I should have been supported and understood more, but instead, generic kind of advice was put out. So, yeah, if you don't know me, I am 23. I got engaged at 21 to my beautiful fiancé, Happy Joe. And we had a lot of commotion when it came to our engagement, us getting married. We had cultural and religious expectations from all different directions and we're people who are really open-minded, impressionable. We wanted to do things right in terms of us and our community and it just wasn't that easy. We'll yap about that in another episode, but one of the main, main, main points of conflict was the fact that we were having the dreaded sex before marriage. Ah! I'll be so wrong. I was having sex before marriage anyway and I was trying to abstain so many times I went through a lot when I was younger trigger warning and yeah it was never resolved because we couldn't really speak about sex like that I feel like sex has been a trauma point in my household in my community and it's one of those where you kind of hide your story for the sake of encouraging the younger ones who are still pure who are still virgins um to stay on their path and that fucks me up to be honest because I feel like if people were more open about what drove them to have sex and um, what needs that people find in sex like I feel like I would have actually just like got myself a sex toy do you get what I mean or like not wasted so much time trying to get a man to love me by letting him in my pum pum but anyway we digress um So yeah, I'm engaged to Josiah in a relationship. And this is a huge improvement because before that I was moving very flipping mad after a breakup. Like the body count (coughs) upped, let's just say that. It tripled. And yeah, it just wasn't a good look generally. I don't even think I've spoken about it in this detail. Um, At least for myself. I wasn't someone who was like shouting it from the top of the roof, but yeah just like heartbreak and rebound and just moving mad after that like so going from that being someone who was just playing around with guys their emotions waiting for someone serious to come I had someone serious come and for the first few months our relationship was very centered in the notion that Christ is at the center we will do things right and you know the attraction increased <laughs> i love the way that this man thinks and his presence just made me feel so grounded and literally love like our love for each other couldn't be contained and we had plans to get married as soon as possible 
because that was kind of driven by our culture, which is pretty crazy. Like, But like I said, we can go into that on a separate episode. But what's the point where we're like, okay, we're having sex. We've tried everything. We've prayed, we've fasted, we've spoken to people in our circles, like pastors. We had our own pastors, mentors, friends. And we're just not getting the solutions. Like, we're actually trying here. Like, we're trying bloody hard. And a couple times... We, like, managed to not have sex. But besides that, we were clotting. I won't lie to you. And one of the points was when people were like, you know what, you're clotting, you're sinning, so get married. Because there was, like, a biblical notion that Paul said. It's basically, like, you need to contain your lust. I can't remember the exact scripture that shows you how much I have not divulged into biblical scripture nowadays. But it was essentially, like, marry um so that you can control your lust and you can have self-control so me and just i were like you know what we must have a lust issue we're sinning let's get married and one of the notable figures in our christian walk we went to seek out help for them to marry us and they were essentially like no you're doing it wrong you're taking the bible out of context listen we're two very intellectual people like we were studying our shit we were studying their shit and to hear like such a prominent figure say like no this is not the context was so crazy because one they had the power to help us and support us and two like i just don't think that scripture was out of context like i think it's very plain like get married that's god's ideal right and They then proceeded to say, you know, if you don't have sex for six months, I will then marry you. Because I'll know God's hands on it. Um, Most marriages I've seen where people have had sex before marriage fail. And I was thinking, oh, rotted. We're imposing man-made things on there. And its undertones are, you have to get yourself right and get yourself together before you can be with a person you love for the rest of your life. And those six months for someone who perhaps hasn't experienced, like, trauma or has no idea what it's like to walk in your shoes sounds easy. And it's just crazy how people will hurl out pieces of of advice so that they feel a sense of dignity and control and status. And I get it, like... We have safeguarding measures we can put in. Perhaps the concern was that we don't love each other. We're just having sex with each other. We're infatuated. But you're speaking to two adults here who are knowledgeable enough, self-aware enough to actually think, okay, you know what? Your concerns are valid. Let's take this away. But it wasn't just a, um, like a warning or something to consider. It was, no, I'm not helping you because this is not where you are when and if you do this you know where we're at and this whole notion that you need to be whole and you need to be perfect and you need to tick these boxes to do this i don't know i just feel like it's not authentic it's really not like first of all maybe to us two days of not having sex um it's a huge achievement but that's not even the point the point is we miss the point <laughs> of the function of love. Love is the most potent force and it really, really does heal you even where you are broken. You cannot pause and wait for yourself to be whole before you love because you need love there in the first place to heal. So what I'm not advertising is that, okay, you jump into a relationship to be healed no 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 or that you place your kind of hope in a situation externally or in a place but i'm saying destroy this picture of perfection that you have to be completely whole to be to love things do not have to be perfect you are the author of your own life you know what's best, you can set yourself your own goals, your own indicators, and you can also tell yourself, okay, I've got to stick to these, 
And even when you want to bend things and bullshit yourself and love from a place where you know isn't quite the ideal yet, check yourself. Check yourself. It's like, I know I'm not whole enough to do certain things right now. And that's okay. But I'm proactively working on that. And it's like, this notion of perfection in love and in relationship, uh, it's just a killer. It really is a killer. Yeah. I think the key takeaways are, do not wait to be whole, to live the life you want to live. I don't know one perfect person. And the people I find most attractive and most impactful are the ones who are constantly learning, constantly aiming up higher, knowing that they've got so many faults and blind spots, but they're stepping into places of education. They're stepping into places where their wounds are healed. And even in that place, they are serving from a place of experience and helping others who have the same issues, whether that be body image, whether that be addiction, they're helping them overcome that. And perhaps they've only been sober for two years. Yeah. Your wholeness is not required for you to have impact. I'm signing off. I really hope this helped you. I really was yapping, but hopefully with some direction. Yeah. Send you my love.